Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So, last summer I did a load of courses, eBay related courses, on a site called Skillshare. And now I've decided to migrate those courses over from that website to YouTube. So there's going to be loads of different beginner courses that are going to be coming over here uh, for you guys to view on this YouTube channel. So with that being said, the next video you're going to, uh, going to see is obviously one of those courses. Um, so yeah. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to another eBay reselling related video course. So in today's course, we're going to learn where you can find items to resell on eBay. So where can you actually find items to resell on eBay? That is the question and that is what you're going to learn. So first off, we're going to start with a certain item and that certain item I'm going to choose is video games so we're going to look at video games and that is just an example to help refer um, refer to over the next few videos because if we don't have an example to refer to it might be a little bit hard to associate it with something else so when we associate it with an example it becomes easier so we're gonna we're gonna focus on video games so I'm gonna go through various different places that you can actually source items for your eBay business and we're going to associate it to video, video games, see if we can get video games in those situations and what other items we can get in those situations as well. So without further ado, we'll get on with this. So then guys, let's get straight into this. So, number one, the, the this, this isn't in any order again, this is just going to be, I'm just going to be revealing different places that you can actually get uh, you know, actually source items for your reselling business. So even though I'm calling it number one, it's not necessarily the best place to source items. So number one is going to be charity shops. Now, if you're in the USA, obviously you will know these as thrift stores, but in the UK where I am, we call them charity shops. And these are generally either independent or chain uh, companies that basically set up a little shop and uh, they sell things on behalf of charity, making money for good causes, all that sort of stuff. Now, obviously, items come into charity shops all the time. They get donated by the general public, and there are things in there that obviously charity shop managers will price at a pound or two, and you can quite comfortably sell them for a lot more. So, charity shops are a great way. Now, can you find the example, the subject of video games in charity shops? You can find video games in charity shops. So if video games are your, your sort of thing, um, then definitely go around the charity shops, locate on Google, you can go on Google Maps, it's very, very easy. You can type in charity shops and it should pull up, or you can just type in Google charity shops near me and it should pull up a list of all the different charity shops with the opening times and all that information, all that good information for you and then you can obviously go in and find them. Now, you might be thinking, well, it's all well and good. How do I how do I know that these items are going to make me money? How do I know what is a good thing to pick up and what isn't? Well, there's a great way to do that very very quickly. So when you're in the charity shops, or if you don't want to whip your phone out while you're in the charity shops, if you just go out of the charity shop shop for a second, you can actually go on your eBay app. So I would suggest downloading the eBay app, and you can type in the search bar. Um, obviously the name of the video game or the name of the item in question you can hit the refine button on the right hand side and then scroll down that little uh, menu that pops out until you see sold listings then you just click the sold listings and it will show you all of the sold items that people have actually bought and the amount of money that they've paid for those items so if you find a video game in the charity shop for one pound, let's say it's Spyro the Dragon on PS1, it's the black label version, you go to the charity shop and you click sold listings uh, and then obviously it's a pound there, you can just click the sold listings, type it in and then you can see that obviously it goes for 30 35 pound well that is a brilliant brilliant margin you don't find margins like that every day but it's a brilliant brilliant margin so it's definitely worth picking up so that is the way you can do it and i don't want to sort of uh, alienate anyone who doesn't like video games so 
you can do that with any item. Obviously, if you're looking into antiques and collectibles, uh, that's going to be harder because they're one-off items. And with antiques and collectibles, it's kind of more just having the eye of what knowing what you're looking for because not all of these items are on, sold and completed. But if it's something like toys or it's games or it's just random vintage items or it's video games or it's electronics, any of these things you can just look up, type the model number of a DVD player in and you can look it up, you'll know how much it goes for there and then at the charity shop you can then pick it up. So that is the number one, obviously it's, well, it's not the number one way but it's the first, um, obviously the first place I'm going to talk about within this video course. So number two is one that I really really like and one that a lot of resellers will choose and that is car boots. So if you're in the US again this Car boots, if I give an example, I would say it closely relates to your garage sales. So a car boot for us is similar to your kind of garage sales. So basically, car boots, garage sales, great way to find stock. Obviously, with a, in the example of a car boot, loads of different people flood into a field, open up their boots, set a table up, and then put a load of different items on the table. Obviously with this, these car boots, again, you can type in Google uh, car boots near me and you can get starting times and stuff. Obviously the saying, the early bird catches a worm, definitely applies with car boots because basically you need to get there at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning, get down there because there is competition. So I can't stress enough that if you're going down with car boots or garage sales, get there early and uh, obviously get cement your position there and make sure that you're you know what you're doing and you can pick up those items now what i would say if you want to go to car boots is you might not be able to get signal on your phone or alternatively uh, you might not have time to get uh, to look up items so what i would suggest is you do some research build up your knowledge around the charity shops first off for the first couple of weeks of reselling then go to the car boot and pick up some items that you may be more com uh, comfortable with picking up now you can always go down the route of just saying you know what i'm gonna spend 10 pound at this car boot i'm gonna pick up 10 random items for a pound each if I make profit on them, then great. If I don't make profit, then at least I've learnt something that those items aren't aren't great to pick up. So that is a way you can do it as well. But if you want to kind of minimise your risk, the best way I would say is start around the charity shops where you have full control of what you pick up and how you can do your research. Then move on to car boots where it's a little bit more faster paced and you maybe need to know your stuff a little bit more. But car boots are a great way of actually picking up stock. And you will have seen through uh, the past few minutes while I've been talking a few bits of footage actually from my YouTube channel of me going out um, to the charity shops and to the car boots actually hunting and looking for these items and it is very very achievable uh, to make a full time income on eBay by going to car boots, charity shops and using a few of the other uh, things I will talk about in the next segment and beyond of this course. So guys next what we're going to talk about is local selling sites and auctions. So we'll first start with local selling sites. So what do I mean by this? Well, if you're in the UK, I mean Facebook Marketplace, I mean Gumtree, I mean Spock, I mean uh, all these other, I don't even know, there's so many different uh, local selling sites these days that have popped up, even going local collection on eBay. All these different things, that's what I mean. So you can actually pick up some great deals that maybe people uh, sell at a low price because maybe they don't know the true value of the item. They might sell, for example, again, going down the route of video games, they might be selling a, an old GameCube, for example, with a nice selection of games. We've got Zelda in there, we've got Mario Kart, all those you know nice titles, maybe Mario Kart Double Dash or uh, Mario Sunshine or something like that. You know, some nice, de decent video game titles. And they're selling that for £10. So you know, obviously, if you are in that video game niche and you build up your knowledge, you know, right, that's just popped up on my Facebook Marketplace 
place. Obviously, you can get notifications for this as well. You can get no push notifications on your phone for certain different selling apps, uh, which is great because when a new um, item comes up for your specific keyword that you've obviously got a notification for, you can get in there straight away uh, obviously say to the person that you're interested obviously you can work out a deal if you want to get it an even better price or you can just pay the price offer to pay the price uh, straight away and then say when can we meet up or can I come around your house or whatever or wh whatever the situation is to actually get that item in the end so obviously what I would state with this is video games if you are buying video games on local selling sites this is highly competitive Video games on local selling sites are very, very hard to get your hands on because 20 other people in your local area will be looking for video games. The only issue with video games and with things like Lego and other things like that is it's very, very competitive. So if you want to do this, you've got to be quick and you've got to explore all the avenues that I'm talking about in this course so that then you can actually get enough to sustain a viable business and a viable income. So yeah, all these different online selling sites, definitely utilize them. Get all the apps, download all the apps, your Gumtree, Spark, all that sort of stuff. I believe if you're in the US, I think there's one called Offer Up, Offer Up I believe. And then maybe obviously other ones as well. G download the apps, get notifications for them, set up your saved searches or anything like that. And get get doing this, get, get active out there. And uh, obviously you might be able to pick up some good stuff. Now obviously local selling sites in, in regards to other niches, are actually better because they're easier. So with local selling sites, uh, when you're picking up maybe antiques or something like that, the competition will still be there, don't, don't get me wrong, but it will be less fierce than video games or Lego. Because yes, people are looking out for antiques, but there's not as many people and they're not as ferocious or as quick on the button than a lot, a lot of the video game sellers because they know they need to be quick on the button because of the advanced level of competition. So with regard to other things, local selling sites can be great as well. Toys, things like that, vintage items, all the usual things I've been talking about, electronics, you know, DVD players, VHS players, they're all brilliant as well. Again, maybe with electronics you might come into a bit more competition, but um, certainly local selling sites are a great way to get stock for your eBay business. It's just about choosing the items that you want to pick up. Always think to yourself, what is the niche that I want to go into? Is it electronics? Is it video games? Is it this? Don't try and go for everything all at once. Try and hone down a little bit and find your niche. So, for example, my niche is, is antiques and collectibles. I love antiques and collectibles. It's the majority of what I sell alongside a few other items. However, um, obviously, I look for those in the main. They're the main thing I look for and the main thing I focus on. And that gives me the level of focus I need to actually sustain a good income on eBay. So that is actually local selling sites. So now we're gonna move on to auctions. Now, auctions are one that really do make me smile because I get the majority of my stock from auctions and as I am recording this video I have actually just finished doing an auction for today so basically what happens with auctions is you can go down to the physical auction house or you can go on sites like the sale room or I believe it's iBidder I think it's iBidder or something like that anyway um, but certainly the sale room is the one I use um, and you can go on there you register for a free account and then you can see an online catalog of all the items in the sale generally on the sale room it is going to be antiques and collectibles so if you're not involved with that too much then it might not be for you in the case of video games doing something like auction auctions is going to be hit or miss. I've seen video games at the auction. If there are video games at the auction, it's going to be vintage consoles, i.e., you know, Sega Saturn or Sega Mega Drive or NES or SNES or all those kind of stuff. But um, obviously, if you're doing auctions, if you're going on the sale room, it'll be more driven towards antiques and collectibles. Now, the thing about auctions that I really, really love is the volume of stock you can get in such a little time. I've just got around 20 boxes of stock from an auction that I've just done today 
and basically that is I've spent three hours of my time getting a massive amount of stock and obviously now that leads me to have more time to list the items and process the items at my own leisure and it's such a time efficient way of getting stock if you know the items you're looking out for again and the running theme through this course is know what you're looking out for or try and if you're new to this you've got to try and do the research and get involved in your niche so that then you can actually advance your knowledge and become uh, someone who does know a lot about what they're talking about in that specific niche so for me personally within antiques and collectibles because it's quite a broad field i gravitate towards metalware uh, silver plate copper brass that sort of stuff and also i like uh, things like collectible die cast toys I like uh, what some some other things I like studio pottery as well is a big one for me. So I don't although I I refine it by antiques and collectibles. I refine it further with um, obviously a sub niche of studio pottery or a sub niche of metalware. So it's always worth doing that if you've got a big broad niche. Uh, maybe it's worth just honing down even further. But yeah, auctions are a brilliant one again. With all these things, you can just type in Google, uh, you know, auction houses near me, charity shops near me, car boots near me. Just type that in. You'll get a list of the auction houses. Go on the sale room, register for a free account if you want to get involved with antiques and collectibles. And uh, you'll be able to see a list of auction lots. You can either choose to bid online or you can go down to the sale room in person on the day and uh, bid the old fashioned way kind of so anyway i'll leave that segment there because i have rambled on for quite a while but hopefully that information was useful for you so i will see you in the next segment so the final two things we're going to be covering in this course are contacts and ebay sniping now of course i could go on and i could rattle off a few more probably uh things where you, places where you can get stock however these are the main ones these are the big guys these are the big dogs the places where you're going to get the majority of your stock there are probably the odd few bits and bobs that uh, i could attribute to this course and i could uh, elaborate on a little bit more but these are the ones that i want to focus on because these are the ones that i've built my business on and that i know are tried and true and that using all these methods you can make more than a healthy income selling on eBay if you source with uh, obviously using the majority of these methods you can even make a full-time income just from one of these methods whether it be car boots or auctions or charity shops or whatever because all you need to do is just basically expand so instead of doing one auction a, a month or whatever you do three auctions a month and obviously you go to different ones and you can make more than a full-time income just doing uh, one of these sourcing strategies so the next thing we're going to talk about is ebay sniping so ebay sniping and again this ties in with amazon sniping as well which is something you don't hear of often um, but amazon sniping revolves around sniping i basically buy loss let's let's forget the terminology let's just say buying so this revolves around buying amazon items on Amazon that are vastly underpriced for whatever reason maybe someone's just decided to price that low maybe we don't have much experience selling they are maybe quite underpriced you then buy that off Amazon and then you get it home and you either resell it on Amazon FBA you do have to be careful you cannot buy an item off Amazon FBA to then sell it back on Amazon FBA because you might get into some account trouble however if um, you buy something off Amazon what's known as Amazon mer Merchant Fulfilled the way you tell that it's an FBA or, or a Merchant Fulfilled listing is it'll have the little Prime logo on next to the listing so if you have like uh, loads of different sellers on the listing if it has a Prime logo next to the price I wouldn't be buying that to sell back on FBA because that may be already an Amazon FBA listing and it might come into account trouble for myself but if it doesn't have that little Prime logo and it does have like a plus postage sign, then obviously that is going to be a merchant fulfilled um, product. And, it, and then you can actually get that to your house, get it shipped to yourself and then flip it back on the same listing. But FBA, so Amazon FBA, which is fulfilled by Amazon, 
and again you can type in google to sort of understand a little bit more of what that means it's not um too hard to um sort of look into that but um basically you can then flip it back on amazon fba and you can make profit on it that way alternatively you could buy these merchant fulfilled products on ebay uh, on amazon sorry and then flip them on ebay to make a profit that way now ebay sniping which is the one that's referred to a lot more often is where you buy something off ebay generally on an auction but it can be on buy it now as well using a sniping software something like goof goose beer not goose bid Goofbid, um, which is a website. I believe these uh, sniping softwares are paid. However, what these softwares will give you the ability to do is essentially bid at the last second or the last two seconds so that then you're pretty much guaranteed to get the item uh, depending on your maximum bid that you've set so obviously if you type in google um you know ebay sniping software or ebay sniping tools loads of different ones will come up and then you can enter the item number that you would like to snipe on and then obviously feed that into the system sign up for an account and you as i say you may have to pay for these services uh sign up for account and then enter that item number and then two seconds one second before it ends you will snipe that item and then you know you can do things like misspelt listings so uh, for example you can go on a site called fat fingers which is where basically you can type in a search term and it will pull up all of the listings on ebay that are basically uh, misspelt listings so what what happens is that will then pull up all of these misspelt listings. For example, let's say a PS2 console, PlayStation 2 console, um, maybe there's a misspelt Y in one of the listings, in one of the words. So then using Fat Fingers, that will actually pull that up for you on the website. And then that means that obviously that, that item might not have got as much exposure. So then you can use your sniping tool in conjunction with Fat Fingers and you can actually get a right bargain on some of those items. Then you can choose to either flip them back on eBay for a substantial profit or back on Amazon FBA or Amazon Merchant Fulfilled for a profit. So eBay sniping is brilliant. Again, you can do it with video games. It is quite competitive with video games, like everything is with video games. Any kind of sourcing strategy is quite competitive with video games. You can do this with all sort, all the different niches again, electronics, toys, that sort of stuff, antiques and collectibles, all these different niches you can do eBay sniping with. Just type in your search term, get your sniping software set up and then obviously input the item number into the sniping software so it knows which item to bid on at the last couple of seconds and you're well on your way to making some good profit with ebay sniping so again it's about honing down what sort of uh, niche you want to go into don't try and snipe everything because it's just going to get too overwhelming for you but hone down if you're a video games kind of guy or a girl then obviously video games are going to be more for you and uh, that's what you'll want to be sniping even if it is competitive obviously your drive might uh, get you there anyway and get you to a good income with ebay sniping and then finally what i didn't really say that any of these are um more important than each other however this one i do feel has quite a lot of importance and i've saved it for last because of that reason because it, i do feel it has quite a lot of importance and that is utilizing contacts so what do i mean by that and how can you even find contacts because it's not like when you uh you can't necessarily just uh turn up somewhere to find a contact or what I mean by a contact is just someone who you're in contact with who is willing to sell you items that they've obviously either got for cheaper or maybe they're just uh, selling their personal collection or something like that. How do you actually go about finding contacts? Well, it's quite easy actually and this is the thing because it's so easy, it's actually hard. So what I mean by that is you... You can go to all these places, you can go to car boots, charity shops, garage sales, whatever it is. You can go to those places and people are selling there, families are selling there 
and also people are selling their um, like for example house clearance people so uh, people who do big house clearances on a regular day-to-day -day basis or week-to-week -week basis they will be there selling items just to get rid of them because they're gonna have another house clearance the next week and they're gonna have a load more stuff so those items of it those people are there right in front of you at these car boots at the charity shops obviously in, in, in the charity shops donating items the people you want to make contact with are right there in front of you when you are doing these other sourcing strategies, when you are at these other sourcing locations. So it is quite easy in that regard to find these people. However, it, it, it can be quite hard, especially if you're someone who's maybe not as socially confident as other people, to actually, to actually kind of um, socialize with these people and build a connection. But if you just say, this is what I do, if you get some business cards printed off, business cards are brilliant. Get some business cards printed off, hand your business card over, tell them quite honestly what you do, that you're a reseller, that you want to make profit on these items, but obviously if you've got anything to sell, I will give you a fair price. Say that, hand over your business card, obviously it has your number on it. The more business cards you hand out, uh, in theory, the more um, leads you're going to get back through the door. So the perfect kind of candidate for candidate for giving these business cards to are people who do house clearances at car boots because they're looking to get rid of those items from the house clearances as quickly as possible because they've got another house clearance for next week and going to get so much more stuff in. So they need an outlet to feed to, to basically get rid of this stuff. So also that means that they're gonna be quite cheap. So they're the perfect candidate for you to give them your card. The only thing is you might have to take some items that you don't want. Some, you know, within these contact relationships, you might have to take items from these contacts that you're not too happy with, or in the first couple of instances with meeting them, you might have to pay a little bit more money than you would have liked. However, I would suggest you do that to actually cement the relationship. So when you've got a new contact, you know, they've rang you up from your business card, from giving your business card out, and uh, you meet up with them, see what they've got, maybe pay them a little bit more than you would like to just to cement that relationship first off. And then obviously if they've got a regular source for you, if they've got regular stuff coming to you, then that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. You've got a self-sustaining business pretty much. So contacts are very, very important. You can find them at charity shops, just get talking with people. You can actually network with charity shop managers. So just talk to charity shop managers, tell them what you do, and they may keep stuff behind for you. I've had that. I've, I'm actually in a circumstance where certain charity shop managers keep stuff back for me, which means your competition who goes into charity shops never gets their hands on the stuff. It comes straight to you. So it is so powerful networking and having contacts. So I'm going to leave it on that note, guys, on that real, real gem right there. That should not be ignored, that last point. You really need to get in the game with business cards and get some contacts because that is what is going to put your business to the next level as well as using all these different sourcing strategies going to all these different places to help get as much stock as you possibly can because at the end of the day when you're self-employed it's all about making as much money as you can for yourself we don't have a set wage as someone who's self-employed our wages are variable so obviously we want to make and put in them as much effort as we can so I'll leave it there guys, thank you very much for joining me. Again, I will just say, if you haven't watched my how to list on eBay course, I would suggest you do so if you are a beginner. It's a great course, I go into a lot of detail on all the different things uh, and the process on the computer of how you can actually list an item. Um, and obviously it's on my, uh, not my Patreon, my Skillshare page right now. So I will leave it there guys, thank you very much for joining me in this course.